Pick already through here as INTZ are going to take away Siva Macau with a whole lot of engaged potential and they've banned away the majority of the support champions. Yeah, so actually hitting Dumbledore down in the bottom lane there, but not taking away Thresh, which is just weird. weird. Really, really weird, Spawn. That's exactly right. Morgana and Lulu are going to be taken away, of course. Tok is aiming that one at energy, doesn't want to be against that Lulu in the mid lane. Nautilus is also available coming through here, and they have also respect banned away the LeBlanc. Left the Ari up though, and Lee Sin is also still available. Yeah, Revolta can head back to that incredibly powerful early game jungler if he wants to, of course. I'm only saying incredibly powerful when it's in the hands of Revolta because we've seen Lee Sin fall out of the meta. Yeah, exactly right, but Revolta Gragas used him to up, great though. effect here. Yeah, I think Gragas is the huge one here. I'm surprised the Oculus didn't take it. Instead, they grabbed the Maokai for Thaldrin and he went absolutely massive. They have Dumbledore's Thresh, the kind of absentee band that was so weird. Yeah. You can see they're playing heavy engaged. So what do they get rid of all the disengaged champions? And I love the respect to Energy's Lulu there in the mid lane. Oh yeah. But that's just crazy because he's still got things like Orianna available. If you're gonna hit certain picks, it doesn't really the ones that they did didn't make much sense, but they do lock in Gragas, they do lock in Ari. And once again, we said INTZ, they love to run early game. This is another early game composition. Yeah, and with Sivir as well on the hunt, being able to run around in this one at the same time. And it's not going to be Macau on the Jinx, so they don't need to get too frightened of the level three triple kill to come through, of course is pretty difficult to make that one happen yet again as now Besiktas thinking about their next two picks and they've got a whole lot of flexibility now. Thresh Maokai gives about nothing away. Yeah, Nunu Lucian is what I'm expecting to come here uh, through here for Theocles and Nadius in uh, respectively. Being able to buff up the AD carry just a little bit gives Nadius some tools in there. Rek'Sai, more of an aggressive jungler, looking to yeah. match aggression with Revolta. I'm not expecting that to come through, but wouldn't be overly surprised if that's the case. But Lucian really is the key pickup here. Nadius definitely has looked the most promising on that AD carry. Yeah, but Rek'Sai going to be locked in here for Theocles, though, so I guess they've uh, they've listened, wanting to answer the aggression being put on here by INTZ, but INTZ seem to be dictating this kind of pace, and that is dangerous to be answering this sort of situation by falling into the game plan of your opposition isn't necessarily going to work out. Teleport smite Shivana, though, being thought about for Yang, and Jockster's locking away the Nautilus, and this is a terrifying INTZ lineup. Yeah, it certainly is. They just have so much initiation now coming through from Jockster, Gragas, not to mention the fact that Yang is able to be able to fly in from the back line and take out what is a relatively short range uh, Nadia. So they'll have to be incredibly careful here for Shikdash. And if they do go with Orianna, I will be very surprised that there's not a Nuno on the composition because he just does so many things in this that Rek'Sai does not. They've got all the initiation they need in Thaldren. So the jungle matchup now doesn't really make overly a lot of sense to me, but we'll have to see exactly how it works out and whether Theocles can use a Rek'Sai to get them ahead early. That's what it's now all about. If Theocles isn't able to do that, the Rek'Sai pick is a waste. Yeah, it's a little bit strange, but I guess Rek'Sai probably one of the only champions that can manage to gank an Ari early on in this one. The knock-up very, very important, but are they even going to be able to lock down, lock down Tokers early on in this game? Is that going to be their game plan? Oh, they definitely have kill potential on mid lane until level 6 comes through. Even then, Orianna deals quite well with Ari in the little skirmishes. As long as she doesn't get caught in transition, that's the thing about Orianna. You can't really leave your lane unless it's warded up extensively. Yeah. Because the mobility of Ari is just going to be too much. Throw in the fact that Gragas is there as well. There's just too much pick potential coming through. But in the actual lane matchup itself, energy should be completely fine. And do you think there, there are going to be any lane swaps here, of course? Two short range AD carries, two hooking support players, but is it going to be about the top lanes here? Does the tree want to get away from the dragon? No, not necessarily. Thaldrin's shown that he can go into two, the 1v1 matchup easily. Maokai jungles fairly well on the early game, especially level one is able to pick up a quick level two. Yep. Shivana a much better jungler. So if you do go into the 2v1 matchup, expect Yang to not even go into his lane for a little while, <laughs> to just run around, probably take two or three camps, teleport down there with level two and some consumables. So I think that standard lanes or lane swap not really being dictated to in the draft itself. I think that both teams will fare equally as well, unless they want to unlock someone like Dumbledore to be able to roam around on the Thresh.
Yeah, well, I guess that might be an opportunity here. Both of these support players may, in fact, want to be doing that because both with that initiation potential, the death sentence, the dredge line to come down. So these supports, they may want to get out of that lane. Yeah, and there's a reason that Nautilus is such a good roaming support, and it's because he used to be a jungler. He fulfills yeah. a second jungler role better than most people because he's first off a jungler. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly right. They have the ability to get Jockster into the lanes, try and affect some quick ganks. Gragas sets up ganks very well with his oh, yeah. flash body slam. You're able to get in there and gap close extremely well, but... As I said, I don't think that either team is too pressured to look for a 2v1. Well, we'll see whether that does come down and whether or not Revolta is going to have the early game power that he's had previously. His lease in was, of course, available. They opted out of it, wanting to pick away that Gragas from Theocles. And look, I understand it because, of course, Theocles did look fantastic on the champion. Gragas himself is just insanely good at the moment, just in general. But... Revolta, would he have had a little bit more of a chance to impact the map early on on the Lee Sin or no, something like I, that? I really prefer Gragas over Lee Sin right now. Mm -hmm. He's got CC where Lee Sin doesn't have any early game. His gap close is much more reliable in the form of the body slam. I just honestly think that Gragas is superior to Lee Sin in most categories at the moment, as we are about to jump on the rift. Yeah, getting onto the rift, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be Besiktas of Turkey taking on INTZ of Brazil and already... People being discovered. Thaldron going to have to move away from this top side of the map. Does get a ward down, though, and spots every member of the Brazilian lineup heading through this jungle. Yeah, and already you see the huge five-man stack coming through from INTZ, but they're against Arexai. You need to be careful. If at any point you get caught out, the stragglers will be picked off quite effectively as another sapling spots out Macau. He takes some damage. Not very good at soccer. Or football, depending on where you're from, as Macau is going to get that one into the back of his head. I think we should go with football. Audience yeah, I, I, appropriate. I think, yeah, I, I, I knew I made a mistake as soon as I said it. But energy is going to find the team here as well. Wards are going to be placed. And the deep vision now available for Besiktas. Of course, their bottom lane heading towards the bottom side of the map because INTZ were all grouped up. Yeah, so INTZ are the ones that look for the lane swap early and it's because of Shivana's earlier jungle prowess. You have to think that they yeah. feel confident taking this one. Although I really don't give it, think it gives too much away unless they go for a late invade here onto Rek'Sai. Well, they are pinging him out. Energy now throwing the ball around in this mid lane as well as Rek'Sai might be discovered. Yeah, Rek'Sai, Theocles' jungle is in absolute tatters now. He's not going to be able to grab anything early. The invade comes through. Yang's going to be able to pick that one up along with Rolvolta. And all of a sudden, Rek'Sai is so far behind. Can't do anything. Nadius and Dumbledore, they're going to be able to take down the Gromp and head towards this bottom side, but that means they were unable to freeze up this wave. We'll see whether that was a decision that they made they on purpose. They might catch Theocles for a second time here. Oh, goodness me. Yang now able to get the damage down. The flash into the dredge line. Catches him after the flash. Burns down as well. Jockster locks up first blood. And man, Brazil have come to play. And that was just a bad jungle path coming through from Theocles. He got forced away. And all of a sudden, just continued on the top side of the jungle. If there is a 2v1 as Dumbledore comes in for a roam. Yeah, there's the hook onto Tokas as well. Command attack dissonance going to land. Clockwork wind up doing some work, but in comes the rest of INTZ. Dumbledore is going to get locked down by the stun. Jockster with so much of an ability to get around this map, even at level one, but they don't pick up the kill. No one going to fall. And it's just Theocles that has died this game so far. Yeah, and everyone holds summoner spells as well. That was a very long skirmish coming through and not very many people burning anything. So Thaldron, he's joined in the top lane. It's a 1v1. Maokai versus Siva. Maokai will be completely fine in that matchup, especially with the extra consumables. <coughs> and it really is only Theocles that's fallen behind in this game. Revolta now going to get a three buff start because once he re recognizes Theocles very low, can't go in. Rotates down to his own red buff after taking Theocles, and he'll be able to grab the blue buff whenever he wants on the return. Yeah, and the thing is, Rek'Sai just has so much power in the early game generally, but now he's going to have absolutely none. Yeah, exactly right. And it was just some greedy parking that came through, was absolutely punished. As Yang actually picks up a Hunter's machete there, so he's looking to take down those Krugs, you'd have to think, at every opportunity after oh, yeah. he's shoved out. Looking for the extra 15 gold that comes through. Not to mention some nice sustain against monsters. 
Mont probably wants to get to that skirmishing saber as soon as possible as well now that he's up against the Lucian. Yeah, potentially looking for the 1v1 to come out there. Also make some effect of the second summoner spell. <laughs> think it's a worthwhile pickup. I know that if you are in a position where you're against a top laner and it's a 1v1 lane, you're expecting jungle pressure to come through. It can be incredibly risky. However, at this point in the game, it's going to be 2v1. You know he's going to be jungle farming more than anything as Revolta is spotted by Arexa. So Theocles at least caught up in levels. Yeah, it does have even farm here with Revolta who hasn't and been leaves. back to base. That is so bizarre. He just was there and he left his top laner to potentially get dope. Yeah, he's hanging around here. Prey Seekers are going to land onto the Brazilian lineup. There are some wards around here, so Brazil not going to be unnoticed in their movements around. Dumbledore heading up towards this top side as well. Stoldron able to take down a cannon. Oh, actually missed it. A little bit sad there. Uses the Twisted Advance to clear out a creep, and the dive not going to come through just yet. So Dumbledore also comes up into the top lanes. Leads Shivana versus Lucian 1v1 in the bottom side of the map. You'd have to think that is firmly in INTZ's favor. Going to be able to shove that lane out now at will. They've got a 2v2 unfavorable, you'd have to think, in the top lane. And mid lane, not much really going to come across here. But Nadius will start to maybe struggle against the Shivana. That's what a lot of these uh, matchups tend to do here in the mid is when you've got a lane swap, it's just going to be a bit of an island. Revolta takes down the blue buff here as well. Three buffs start complete as Theocles now just tries to get as many jungle camps as he can find. And we'll see whether he goes for the Chilling Smite or whether he goes in for something a little bit more farm heavy. Because if he does go with Chilling Smite, he'll be able to gank a lot more effectively, but he's just not going to be able to catch the Gragas in terms of how much experience he picked up early. As Dumbledore in for another <coughs> gank on the mid lane. So we mentioned the fact that Tokas might be, I guess, soloed out here in... Trying to get some focus down on him early, that definitely looks to be the case. Oh yeah, Dumbledore though was forced to leave that mid lane area because there are a whole lot of the Brazilians heading down that river. And Nautilus and Gragas just seem to be friends. Revolta and Joxter just chilling out in the enemy jungle. And really Dumbledore just got happening. overextended here onto Macau. They're going to pincer in. Wisely backs away, some good six cents maybe. Yeah, Dark Passage going to land there, but Dredge Line under Dumbledore gets stunned up just a little bit as in goes Soldier, and he does get out eventually using the flash. Macau goes down as Dumbledore <laughs> picks up the kill, and I don't know how that worked, but Soldier played that so aggressively and didn't get punished. Yeah, so Soldier dove back in, had to flash out, but it was really all about Dumbledore who got the first playthrough and then hooked him back under turret with Ignite. Just able to take the two turret shots in there and picks himself up a well-deserved kill. Yeah, really beautifully played. If we have a look at this CS line in the mid lane, Energy actually quite far ahead here, 60 to 50. Has picked up himself up a Chalice and a couple of Doran's rings as well, so he's going to be very, very safe in that mid side. Of course, Yang is going to be ahead on farm, but man, Thaldron has really kept up despite all of the action here on the top side. And you can see it's a 100 gold lead for Besiktash, or oh, maybe a 50 gold. It's nothing at all. Yeah, so in the end, they have to swap back because Besiktash, they've picked up CS advantages in two of the lanes. Oriana has one, not to mention the fact that Nardius has a CS advantage. Oh, yeah. And that's the real terrifying thing. Make no mistake, the AD carry player for Besiktash is their star. And if he is able to get ahead, he will really punish this INTZ lineup. Yeah, and the beautiful thing about Nadius as well is he's their star player in the team fights in the later stages of the game. He sort of sits back for these early phases, but then really manages to shine after the CC's gone down and then just tears everyone apart. Yeah, so we see Revolta sweeping out of pink ward there. A little bit more attention now coming into the mid lane. Two pink wards actually on the bottom side of mid, so you mentioned that the focus that will come through onto uh, energy in the mid lane now seems to be there from the INTZ lineup. Yeah, they've lined it all up here as Dumbledore is going to get dredge line back. Nice double body slam and the Thresh going down so low. These tanky members, Yang's actually going to teleport in as a flash is going to net the dragon. Potentially a kill. No, Revolt is going to lock that one down. As Dive's Yang gonna looking come through, for Nadia, the dive. you are in trouble. And Yang is so tanky as well. Skirmish is saber going to be used as Revolta. He's getting taken down low, but Tokas arrives 
and he picks up the kill. INTZ with an incredibly aggressive but beautifully played out dive. Yeah, so able to get there in the end. It was all because Thaldrin got greedy with his teleport to get more farm. Went back into the top lane. So in the end, the teleport from Yang wasn't able to be matched and they're able to get the successful blue buff invade. The denial of vision was very strong around mid lane and that's a very powerful first move coming through for INTZ. Yeah, really beautifully done. Although it. now the energy shockwave yeah, he's looking for something here. Revolta body slams out, but it's a beautiful boomerang to get energy to half health here. He does not want to go any in any further. As Thaldrin able to be able to take down this top lane out of turret as another creep wave comes through. Yang is going to try and get some damage down and does have a Cinder Hulk, but Thaldrin, he's managed to do what he wanted to. He's getting burnt down though. Yang's got a lot of damage with just that health item. Of course, the burn with your burnout. Pretty insane. Double burn coming so through there. A couple of objectives going to be hit back here for Besiktas. They pick up the top lane turret. They're going to get first dragon as well. So even though they got killed, three members down in the bottom side of the map, they're able to pick up the first two meaningful objectives. Yeah, really looking good. Macau, though, he's headed back to base. Picked himself up a pickaxe. Does have a little bit extra gold based on the kill and the couple of assists. Tokas doesn't quite find the charm as energy's going to shield himself up anyway. And... Mid lane is back at it. Dissonance with a lot of damage. Nadia's actually going aggressive as Macau does have a red buff, but does manage to get a massive burst of damage down. Yeah, so able to get through that spell shield and picks himself up some damage as there's now again coming through from Revolta into this top lane. Will be spotted out by a ward. And Theocles' tunnel network, even though he was put behind early, is becoming to become incredibly impressive. Yeah, top Joxter actually going to use that dredge line to escape the gank in the bottom side as Theocles has turned up down here. Actually managed to stay relatively effective in this game. I mean, 29 CS to 28. Hasn't got his jungle item completed like Revolta does, and Revolta has been involved in three of the four kills on this map here for INTZ, so able to do a whole lot of work with that as far as the gold is concerned, but Yokoli's not going as bad as Dark Passage forced to be used here as Nadius is burning down from that Ignite from Jockster. Doesn't manage to find the last couple of ticks, and Dumbledore is going to have to escape, but INTZ with a lot of pressure on this bottom. Yeah, and they're able to push them out of lane, which means that Nadia is going to have to go back and shop. Top lane turret fell as well, so all of a sudden the gold lead's starting to open up for INTZ. And if they get the bottom was one as well, control of the map starting to fall rapidly in their favor. Yeah, Theocles and Dumbledore are going to try and do their best to clear out this minion wave. Are going to be able to do so successfully as they're running out of creeps here, are the Brazilians. Tokas clearing out minions in the mid lane as well, and he's very, very close to that loot and Zeko, and that's going to mean a whole lot more wave clear, but also a whole lot more burst damage. Yeah, it's just the assassination potential that comes through with Ar one item. Ari really did hurt from the missing DFG if she wanted to go more of the assassin path. Of course, you can build Ari purely as a mage as well, and she does very good consistent damage, but with either the loot and Zeko or the old DFG, you're a complete mid-game assassin, just able to get in there and burst people down. Yeah, smash people in the face with those items. Of course, having some extra AP scaling also going to help out, although it doesn't scale that great. It is definitely still more in the arsenal here for Ari. And she had enough, honestly. She just had. She was able to do buttons all the time on that champion. Yeah, she certainly is a very good combo mage coming through there. You can wait on your ultimate to get a second reel of your spells up. She just does significant burst damage. And stealing away that blue buff from energy honestly set the Orianna back behind. We saw that energy was starting to get a very big lead in the mid lane. It has stayed at about 10 CS, but just when you thought that Orianna would be able to take over the lane completely, missed out on the blue and now being a little bit bullied or at least pressured in the mid lane. Yeah, and Revolta actually thinks that this top side of the map is his in the entirety as he's taking down the red buff of Theocles while Yang is getting rid of these Krugs. Meanwhile, Besiktas in the bottom side are trying to fast push this out But there's going to become a three-man dive in the top lane. Thaldrin's in trouble. He does have a Catalyst and those Merc Treads, but you're exactly right. This Maokai, not as tanky as he's known to be in the later stages of the game. And the inner turret might need to be sacked here by Besiktas. Yeah, so they have to back away because they can't defend it. But a tier 2 turret at 13 minutes into the game would be an absolute nightmare. Creep Wave does run out and Dumbledore has rotated around. So won't be able to get too much more damage on it. At least you hope for Thaldrin's sake. 
Yeah, Thaldron doing the very best that he can to try and clear this one out. He does hold the minion wave off the turret here for a bit as well, and Besiktas successfully defend as Nadius versus Macau on the Hunter's Beam Pop. Boomerang not going to find the Lucian as the culling comes through. Nadius able to answer back on this one. Does flash forward. There's the passive to come down. Double teleports through here. Nadius picks up the kill, though, as Yang's looking for him. Thaldron, of course, in here at the same time, and... Man, Nadius is a boss on this, Lucian. Yeah, and that was just a bad play coming through from Macau. Thought he could out-trade him, but Lucian in the mid-game is the best skirmisher. Just not able to get the boomerang blade across because of all of the mobility in Nadius' kit. And now they're looking to pick up a mid lane turret. Yeah, they've got a lot of creeps here as well. The barrel is going to help clear those out as Tokas is going to be able to throw a ball over the top. So INTZ successfully defend the mid lane, but... This gold lead has dissipated yet again. Yeah, so back to nearly even. The uh, kill advantage still in INTZ's favor. Turret's about to be equalized in Yang, so it will balloon out a little bit. Although he's forced away now by the rotation that's come through into the bottom side of the map. And Besiktas, they're looking shaky, but they're slowly piecing it together. Yeah, twisted advance onto Jockster here as he gets shockwaved back under the turret. Beautiful flay from Dumbledoges. Jockster flashes out and realizes that was an odd decision. Dumbledore's mechanics on Thresh is amazing. He hooked himself to a creep to get into range to flay him back further underneath turret. Just using every piece of his kit to his advantage. That was beautifully done. Hopefully we can see a replay of that in slow motion at some stage. Getting a uh, head shake for that one. But Nadius... Going to be able to clear out this bottom wave. Macau forced to get out of there as the outer turret has fallen down. And Theocles going to clear out these raptors as well. So a few the pink wards. Theocles has done an okay job at getting himself back into this game. Has lost control over the top side of the jungle, you feel, very extensively. But has helped the bottom side of the map get yeah. to the place it has been. 30 CS advantage coming through from Nadius, not to mention he picked up the 1v1 kill that has to feel good against your direct opponent. So he's sitting on an Infinity Edge and a Brawler's Glove. So pretty strong right now on Lucian. Lucian, as well as Jinx, probably have the best one item spike on Infinity Edge, just because of the fact that their passive, as well as the minigun, give them so much additional attack speed, or in Lucian's case, just the ability to shoot more times. Yep. I like that. Ash is the other one, but I won't mention her. Is that because it makes you feel sad because she's still an awesome champion? Or is it because she's not very good in the current meta? She's not very good in the current meta. Oh, that's sad. I'm sad about it for a very different reason. So I think Ash is awesome. No one seems to play it. Yang, though, is going to help pushing out this mid-wave. He's doing exactly what Yang's known to do on this Shivana as well. Just run around and try and get auto attacks on structures. And he is going to be able to take down the mid lane out of turret. Nice death sense onto Jockster. He gets played back in as well. Titan's Wrath gets broken as Dumbledore gets taken down so low. Bouncy oh. castle available as energy unable to use the effective shockwave and then flashes out of there. Ints are just so good at these skirmishes. Orbit Deception after a wonderful charm as well from Tokas as Yang. Looking to take down some wolves. Thought he was going to chase after a kill, but no, of course, the jungle much more important. Jockster going in very aggressively as he's tanking up the turret. Thaldron's picking up that kill easily as Theocles now to come through. The Maokai not going to suffer too much there. Revolta very, very low as there's Chilling Smite available. Tokas doesn't land the charm as Theocles is able to tunnel his way out of there. And Besiktas, they limp away from the fight, but they lose the dragon. Yeah, so they lose out on dragon. They lose out on the team fight. And energy whiffed the shockwave. Not a good feeling coming through there for the Besiktas mid laner because you feel if that was in the right position in that choke, yep. would have been much harder to get across and collapse onto Nadius the way they do as the hook sails to the right. Yang able to dodge out on that one. He is incredibly quick right now. Also incredibly tanky, about to finish off that Warmog's armor as well as this Shivana. And Yang is almost going to be unkillable. In dragon form, so much effective health, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it comes through with all the added resistances coming through there. As we see, Theocles heading back to his red buff. I believe this is the first red buff that he has been able to secure for himself all game. There's still a slight question mark on it as well as to whether he's going to secure it, but energy comes over the top, is able to offer a ball. Just to help him out, and he is going to secure that one as well. It wasn't Jockster's idea to get over there and try and disrupt that action. And their ward just ran out anyway. 
Yeah, so able to push in here in the mid lane. 3,000 gold. The advantage right now for INTZ. So the early game definitely going in the favor of Brazil. And they've got a very incredibly powerful Ari now split pushing in the top lane. Has the Luden's Echo prioritizing boots too. Some cooldown reduction coming through from that Phoenix Codex as Revolta is trying to solo out the Ocalys, but that's just not going to work. You are a Gragas. Yep, you're a tank. And uh, the Sheikdash are waiting alongside here as well. Thaldron looking to try and get amongst it as Theocles will need to go back to base and get some health back. Yang split pushing in this bottom side, but not actually pressuring any turrets just yet. He's quite a way away. But he's 40 CS ahead of the Maokai out now. Thaldron just not going to be able to do his job. As well as Yang, who is a legitimate threat on the back line. He's going towards what you would assume would be a Thorn Mail as well. And from that point onwards, Nadia's just not going to be able to kill him. No, most definitely not. I mean, he'll have to try and ignore the Shivana, hope that Dumbledore can actually peel that one away, which is going to be very, very difficult. As Yang able to get some vision down here as well. Theocli is going to spot that one out, but he's gone Warrior Enchantment, and Yang is not afraid of this Rek'Sai at all. There might even be kill pressure. As that was a chilling smite that did not slow Yang at all. Yeah, so not able to get anything done as Soldier, and he's being pressured by two people. So that was only three members on the bottom side of the map but still enough to be able to take down majority of this turret. Yeah, and Energy is trying to help out. But they take it all. They're able to get the rotation through on that one. They might be able to grab top as well. But Shikdash in all kinds of confusion, not able to even pick a fight. Yeah, they're not committing to anything with all of their members here. They're just sending a couple down there and losing these objectives. Macau takes a lot of damage, though, as Yang looking for something. Tokazo, he's going to kill Dumbledore's Revolta. Hanging out behind the turret. Is going to take the Ventral Maelstrom damage, but then dances. He doesn't really mind at all. As now this inner turret is going to be under fire, Thaldron. Arcane smashes the wave, but he just doesn't have the wave clear. Gets charmed up, but the turret falls down. So they lose two turrets, a member, and they pick up a blue buff in response. INTZ with much better shot calling coming through in game one. It's 21 minutes in, and they've leapt out to a 7,000 gold advantage. Yeah, eight to four in kills. They're even on dragons here because Besiktas did manage to take down the first one, but the five turrets to two. That's the massive statistic because now INTZ, with the superior shot calling this game, also have massive map pressure. But Yang is just huge. Like, th th that's as far as it goes. You have a three-item Shivana with boots too that is going to be diving onto a one-item Lucian. There is no way in the world that Nardius or Energy can currently kill Yang, and he's going to be able to wreak havoc across every member. Yeah, and you saw the attack dissonance combo go across... Um Yang as well, and it did no damage at all, and he's got no magic resist in his item build whatsoever. Yeah, so just getting everything from his ultimate coming through there has got so much effective health now, especially against the AD users coming through on Besiktas, and his mission is just to take out Nardius, let uh, energy be dealt with through Tokas, but the top laner right now is in a position to really carry out this mid game much earlier than you'd expect a Shivana to be able to do. Yeah, and I understand that Energy is behind, just wants to get some effective statistics as well, but I disagree with the Arm Guard. I feel like Energy needs to be picking up as much AP as he possibly can, and it's going to mean that this Shockwave is just going to bounce people around, but they'll just ignore it. Yeah, and I don't know who it's directed to either. If he gets caught by the Assassin in the mid lane, a soldier and trying to fight here. Yeah, they're looking for oh, Yang, the Drax. What the hell? Yang takes absolutely no damage at all. Hasn't even blown the ultimate. The burnout doing so much work as he dives over the top. The culling going to be used here. That's the only way Nadius can actually get anything down as, my goodness, that dragon took so long to die and Nadius almost killed himself. Yeah, Nadius actually wasn't hit by any abilities there. It's the Oculus dove. Yeah, trying to get the dive on, but Revolta still tanking up this turret. Macau getting the auto attacks off on the Hunt's Beam pop. They do take the turret down, but Macau's going to pay for it with his life. Energy picks up that kill. Doge Takes a lot of damage. The charm, though, not going to land as that was an interesting flash. Orb of Deception comes over the top. Thaldron still looking to engage this one. Dissonance for the speed up, but a nice Riptide is going to help get them out. Energy takes a gigantic burst of damage as Tokas gets the ultimate back available. 
Spirit Rush, one more charge as Orbit Deception is going to find energy again. They've and got Yang back available, but Tokers is dead. Yeah, he is super dead as energy gets the shutdown oh. there. Teleport to come through from Yang, though. They want to re engage. Energy gets stunned up as Joxter trying to be the hero. Energy's going to die. Nadius. Super low gets smote here by Yang, who now again finds himself in amongst multiple members as Revolt is chasing Dumbledore. And Yang, I have a feeling, might be able to 1v3 as he's going over to the Gromp. Yeah, so he, the problem is he doesn't have CC, but they actually can't kill him. Without Nardius having a Last Whisper, there is just no way he currently dies. Yeah, well, he's got the Vamp Scepter going, hopefully, towards that Bilgewater Cutlass and Blade of the Ruined King, so he will have a little bit more sticking power. After that, I'm hoping for a Frozen Mallet. But we'll see whether that one does actually come through. INTZ going for their second Dragon. 10 to 8 now in kills. The gold lead still at about 7,000. A little bit less, 6.5. So the Shikdash not behind by as far. And Energy picked up a couple of kills in that last skirmish. He's now got a needlessly large rod. Yeah, so he's at least hitting a little bit harder. Also, Nadius is still equal items coming through with... Macau, which is absolutely massive for being behind, what, 6,000 gold oh, in a yeah. game. So he's getting the farm he needs. Also going to pick himself up a red buff. But they need to continue to stall this game for much longer. And unfortunately, with that turret going down, they no longer have the tools to be able to do so. Yeah, and Thaldren, he's 3-0 and 3, but he's behind 60 CS. And Yang just looks so much bigger. You can see he's level, I believe, 15 to level 13. Yep. Which is just nuts. Yeah, and this is the thing about Shivana. She just picks up CS wherever she goes. Trying to push into the mid lane now is Bashikdash, so they'll at least get a turret back for their problem. Revolta needs to be careful there because Nadius, if anything, has shown that he has a willingness to be aggressive, and there are members in the top and bottom lane currently for Ints. Yeah, it's the 1 3 1 split push coming down here, but of course, Macau with a lot of wave clear, there are, they are able to defend that They're turret. They're out Baron on the side of INTZ. Do you think they just feel like they're further ahead than they actually are, maybe? Well, they're really far ahead, so I don't know how f much further ahead you can be. 7,000 gold at 26 minutes is a fairly significant margin. Oh, it's not, it's not completely it's shut out, It's two major items. That's, it's, not, it's not like we can do anything and still win, though, you know? Isn't it? Isn't it? I think it is. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, look, you're the boss. So we'll, we'll take your word for it, Spawn, and we'll see whether they are going to go for the aggr overly aggressive play on this Baron. Not going to be going for it just yet, though, as INTZ are just going to get some exclusive vision of the area. They're sweeping out as best they can, but Shiktash still with some decent defensive vision on this top side, but other than that, there is nothing there, and INTZ are just running freely. Like, no one can kill Yang right now, so Yang can honestly go up and hit that inhibitor by himself. And unless they bring four members to it, they can't kill him. And they're just going to be able to start up the dragon regardless. Yeah, Tokers uh, is actually standing on a ward here as well. They haven't swept this one out, but INTZ, they do have exclusive vision of the pit. And they know that Tokers is standing there. There's nothing that Bashikdash can do. And this is the perfect example of a lose-lose situation. Yeah, and they go for the lose around the Baron. So they're going to give up the first inhibitor of the game. And once again, there's just no good decisions coming through for Besiktas. Look at Thaldren. He's trying to whack him down. Probably does less damage right now than the base range end coming through from Yang. Yeah, and Yang just might just I sit alongside. I don't know why he's backing away. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit interesting. Maybe lost vision of a few of the members here. As actually, INTZ have gone down fairly low from this Baron, so it's their turn to be a little bit indecisive here. Yeah, so INTZ, I'm very confused by how Yang was just playing that fight against Soldier. And you saw he was getting absolutely no damage done to him whatsoever. Could None. have just continued to run up there, hit the uh, next uh, inhibitor a couple more times. Would have been able to take that one down easily. He had complete vision of everyone on the Besiktas lineup, but instead decides to play it extremely safe and back away. Yeah, Tho Theocles now going to be able to clear out that pink ward there as well. So Besiktas... Clearing vision, and they've got wards now in this Baron pit, so they're clawing their ways back in. They haven't lost an inhibitor, which is very, very important. But INTZ still firmly in control. Yeah, certainly are. They have all the control over the entirety of the map. They're able to take away the bottom side of the jungle still. So even though that is a 60 CS advantage, it is much more in reality, because most of those are monsters, as Zhang has just been probably farming more effectively than both junglers on the map as well when it comes to the jungle. And you see that he's now level 17 to level 14, just able to take away everything, continue to push. 
Yeah, BF Sword's completed here for Macau. As Energy, he's going to get bounced back into his team. Uses the Zonyas there as it blocks out the damage from that one. As, oh, that Spell Shield was god tier from Macau. Shockwave doesn't do anything. Nardius now under fire. As Orbit Deception not going to find the last hit. But double kill from a massive crit out of Macau. The Body Slam under Thaldren. As INTZ, they are going to follow him over the top. Tokers actually taking a fair bit of damage here, but does get the shutdown. INTZ, only Dumbledore now alive for Besiktas. And they can either take the base, take the Baron. INTZ, they got so many good options. Yeah, so they're going to just be able to push in here. Yang can just take up the turret realistically. Although he goes on a side wave mission to try and push in bottom simultaneously. So they will get two inhibitors and once again a horrible shockwave coming through from energy just yeah. not able to get on top of anyone so both key shockwaves missed out this game and he streams back in but needs to be careful he doesn't get re-engaged on yeah they are going to lose both of the inhibitors here as yang he's just tanking up everyone not too worried about much at all as the members of Bashikdash are going to get slowed down nice explosive cask going to stop the re-engage as intz they just want to get back to base, pick up some items and head straight to the Baron. Yeah, exactly right. You nailed it. They've got control over the bottom side of the map. Baron is the next clear objective to come through for this team. You see the Ari has picked up a death cap. 5-1-5 and five My goodness. is <laughs> Tokers in the mid lane. He's an absolute monster. Hasn't really been the flashy carry this game, but every single team fight just does a little bit more than energy and Besiktas look like they might be going for a Desperation Baron, although now they're just clearing it out. Probably can't hope to get much done. Yeah, they get rid of the vision though. And Dumbledore able to get some down for himself. It's pinged out by NTZ, so they know where to sweep that one. Eight turrets to three though. This is the big deal, is INTZ have just taken down everything of from the Turkish lineup and Yang. He's just going to solo out this dragon. He's got a Blade of the Ruin King now as well. Yeah, exactly right. He's picked up another Ruby Crystal. You'd expect him to go towards some version of MR. Maybe a Spirit Visage. Most likely, probably, the Banshee's Veil coming through there. I like there. Spirit Visage. If you're going to take a um, Blade of the Ruin King, it's Theocles. He's going to get a ward down here, but Yang did take away the dragon. Didn't even use Smite. Yeah, so he's going to be able to Smite the Gromp. Exactly. That's what you got to do. Need that buff. And we see they're completely ignoring Baron. They just want to push in the top wave, recognizing that someone has to go in there eventually to deal with it because it's the only wave left. And in the bottom lane, Shivana just once again split pushing by herself, going to be able to shove in. If they don't go right now, Shivana will just take the whole base. Yeah, Charm going to land on a Thaldren here as well as Righteous Glory has been popped. It explodes now, though. INTZ, they do make it out of that situation as now they pop their own. Nice spell shield. Going to block away the Prey Seeker, but... Righteous Glory going to fall down again, and Yang, he's going to take a Nexus turret. Yeah, so he might just take the whole base. Cannot be stopped in here. You saw how little damage the couple of shots of the Culling did to him, and he's just able... He would win that 2v2, I think. Oh, yeah. The Oculus is super squishy here as well, as this Rex Eyes continued to be low, and man, energy just gets torn apart by that combo. Jockster, he's going to get hooked up there a little bit. Nadius gets knocked up by the Alt Thaldren as well as Twisted Advance to try and get him in amongst it. But man, Tokas is doing some damage. Energy does use the Zonyas, but it's not going to do much at all as the Theocles now going to get fire breathed at him. Yang just being the gatekeeper to the fountain. And INTZ with a gigantic first game victory. Besiktas, they looked great in the early stages. There were some things that were working well, but INTZ, they got one dive in the bottom lane and that snowballed the whole game out of control. Yeah, exactly right. They understood that they had the teleport advantage and were able to push it. What did we say? Oriana can't walk down first because she'll get caught in transition. Yeah. No teleport coming through from Maokai meant that it was a 5v3 